Hi guys and welcome back. I am Priscilla Moy and we are live here on The Hot Seat where I'm introducing to you two amazing locals here in town that do some amazing things and have an amazing story. Our first guest is an actress who then went to law school and then now is back in the acting game. So you, some of you might know her, some of you might have seen her. So everyone please welcome Mary Kaufman. Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please take a seat. Yes. So hello, hello, to the hot seat. Hi, it's our first time meeting. Yes, first time meeting. Yeah, yeah, very glad to be here. Though <laughs> I hope you're not nervous. No. Thank you for sitting here on the hot seat and talking to us yeah. about all of your amazing achievements. So first and foremost, we were talking a little bit off camera when we did go to break, and Mary Kaufman, like that's technically your stage name. It is my right. stage name. Yes. Yes. So put that out there. Like she's yeah. a queen. She's of multiple identities. A Hannah Montana. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. But you're originally from Detroit, Michigan. I am from Detroit, yeah, so Michigan. You're a Midwest girl. Yeah, I am a Midwest girl. So I do say Detroit, mm -hmm. but I am actually from a suburb of Detroit, at Gross okay. Point, Michigan. I think okay. if people are fans of John Cusack, they might know from Gross Point mm -hmm. Blank. Yeah, it was. There was some that was filmed there, but it was mostly not filmed in Gross Point. But there was a little bit that was. Yeah. So that's how most people know it. But yeah, very, very nice, very quiet very quiet suburb. I went to school there. I was raised there. And then I went to Hope College, which is on the west side of Michigan. Mm -hmm. And then I spent some time in London, England for a year because I thought I wanted to get my law degree in England. But then that didn't necessarily work out. So I came back. I got a second bachelor's degree in paralegal studies. And during that time, I actually did start acting in Michigan. I started doing local things there. Mm -hmm. I actually did a film in Michigan that was filmed where I went to camp growing up. And when I filmed that, I actually adopted a cat that was on that farm. And, and that cat's still mine. She's here. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. So she's kind of been with you since, yeah. like, the start. Yeah, about yeah. eight years, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Well... Now you have a furry friend, and then you always share something really yeah, special exactly. with her. So I'm also from the Midwest, so that's going to be something oh, where no, I'm, I'm from Chicago. So I'm pretty aware of, like, Michigan and all the things up there, and it's cold. It is basically. cold. It's very cold. Yeah, it's not as windy as Chicago. Though. Mm hmm Yeah, but now we're here. We're in a warm, sunny place, and <laughs> amazing. So you technically started on the stage, right? It was theater and stage performance kind of your thing. At the uh, beginning. Yeah, sort of like when I was in high school, like we had to do some sort of after school activity to get mm -hmm. credit to graduate. Okay. You could do sports, you could do sports management. I think there was also an exercise like program you could do, but I you could also use theater to right. get those credits and so I decided I did the I did the uh, like the the winter they did the musical and fall they did the play. Mm -hmm. The play was a bit more competitive because it's a very small school, so there were small plays. But the musical, like more people could do it. So yeah, I was mostly in in the ensemble. I never got a main part in the musicals, but I still enjoyed it very yeah. much. So what about stage and performing really drew to you? Because I'm assuming this was more in the beginning of your love for acting when you kind of figured that out, right? Uh, so I think it's just more just I like. Like being in front of an audience, mainly I like, mm -hmm. I, I guess like sort of Lady Gaga, I live for the applause. Yeah, <laughs> all that. Right. Like it just like it just shows that like I think mainly because like there's a lot that goes into acting. You know, like you have to break down the scene, you have to rehearse and stuff. And I guess like getting rewarded for your hard work and doing something you truly love. I don't know. I just like felt like I always loved performing. It wasn't necessarily like anything that like I could say that I truly like could point a finger on. I just mm -hmm. know that I always really like to do it. Yeah, that, that's awesome because yeah. it kind of led you to doing everything that you do now. Yeah. And, you know, you did go to law school. You did have paralegal studies. So in a way, that's a lot of speaking. It's a lot of presenting. It's a lot yeah. of being very assertive in front of people and stating your case. No pun intended. Yeah. But, yeah, so that's kind of, I'm assuming, where that comes from, your love for performing and things like that. Yeah, so, and it actually, like, I realize now that, like, acting really does help, like, those who practice law as well, because obviously, like you say, you're in front of a judge and stuff, you're presenting your case, and you have to be super eloquent to mm -hmm. get that point across, and also, like, because I, I thought about this, too, because I went to an acting intensive at Dream Tracks this re weekend with, with Michael Cimino, he's an actor, I don't know if you know who, who he is or not, but yeah, and I talked to him about that, where I said, yeah, you know, you, you were on me about, like, learning how to listen while I'm acting, and I was like, yeah, you know, like, we really do listen in real life, but for some odd reason, like, it's really hard to get that into acting and stuff, like, it's like, yeah, because you, you know all the lines and stuff, you know what the other person's going to say, so you have to, like, sort of make it look real, like you're yeah. hearing that stuff for the first like time. Like, being, being in the moment yeah. is um, definitely a skill that you have to obtain when you are yeah. training as an actor. So you didn't mention London, England. What about London and the UK really called to you to go for legal studies? 
Yeah, it was something where I thought I really did want to live there. I always like was really into the UK. I really liked watching BBC growing mm -hmm. up, so I thought it was something I could do, and I really did feel at home there. But you know, it, was, it, it is a stark contrast, and there were some things going on with my family that that I might not be comfortable sharing. But it was a situation where I did have to go back. But while I was there, I did learn about about myself. I do think that when you are in your early twenties, I really do think like maybe at least for a year that you should get out of your hometown for. A sec for like a year or so just so you can find yourself to see like you know like do I have bigger things that I'm interested in and that's basically why I did it I just wanted to see yeah. if like there was anything that called me like yeah. outside of my hometown so. yeah I know it, it kind of fascinated you and it kind of if anything like it kind of was a success in a way because it did teach you more about yourself it, it, you really did find yourself there and you know you kind of get not only getting out of your hometown but getting out of the country and experiencing different types of people Right. Yeah, and especially living in a city, and I know that I think a, lot, a good portion of my graduating class, if they did not stay in Gross Point, they live in Chicago, New York City, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for you to especially spend time in a city because it really helps cement in, like, the world doesn't revolve around you, and, like, you're only, like, the only person you can count on is yourself. So I think mm -hmm. it's really important that you get that sort of mindset, not in an aggressive way, but just sort of yeah. like to, like, like, sort of have a bit of, like, experience in the real world outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. Now what kind of law really fascinates you? What law do you practice? So what I I'm sort of like I'm sort of taking a break from practicing right now, but what I did, I did personal injury. And okay. it's sort of, I really did enjoy helping people. Okay. And I feel like especially in personal injury where you're helping out people who are in a vulnerable position. They yeah. got into a car accident, lots of these people like, you know, their car was totaled, they don't mm -hmm. have money, they have very bad medical bills, and so I just want to make sure that they get their justice and so they can like, because they need someone to, like, talk to these insurance companies yeah. and, like, right. be able to get a decent settlement so they can get their life back on track. And that was definitely one of the more rewarding aspects. I really liked, like, I, I'm a, I was a very good negotiator. I really liked yeah. negotiating with the insurance adjusters where I would get the full policy limits, and, and it was just always, I liked calling them to tell them that they got a good settlement because they were so happy mm -hmm. to hear that. And when did you move to Vegas? I moved to Vegas in June of 2020. So okay. it was during, I moved during the pandemic, which was quite the experience. Mm -hmm. Did work bring you out here or is it just Vegas was calling yeah. you in a way? I actually always wanted to move to Vegas. Mm -hmm. I always liked it. My dad does have a practice out here. So okay. it wasn't like I was going in cold. And oh, and that practice is Lips and Nielsen if you have any like insurance events or business like lobby. <laughs> so just like pulling that plug in. Um, but, but yeah, I, it was. I, I like I like the temperatures. I, yeah. I definitely liked that it was close to like close to LA. I think if I think even when I was practicing law, I still sort of had like in the back of my mind like maybe I do want to like maybe at least for fun anyway go back to acting. So that yeah. was another. And so that thing. kind of probably recently came back to you because I noticed that you you're all about you couldn't get rid of your love for acting. No, right? The love came back. Well, it was there, but then you're like, no, I need to decide to make this my career now. So when was that epiphany? What really drew you back into it, like, for good? I think it was fall of last year. Okay. I think I was sort of, like, sort of, like, maybe it's because I was sort of in a place where it's like, oh, do I still want to practice law? Mm -hmm. This job isn't really working out, so what else can I do? And I, so I was just thinking, like, oh, like, you know, I, I always liked acting, and I mean, I'm out on the West Coast. It's a bit more attainable now. So yeah. I thought that maybe I can take classes and find a job that's a bit more, along with finding a job that's more flexible. So Yeah, and it definitely is. It can be what you make of it. Yeah, exactly. Obviously. And that technically led you to Dream Tracks. So I'm assuming that's yes. how you find Dream Tracks. And you're currently in it now. I'm not really sure how the classes work, but I, I know some people stay for an extended amount of time, and then they'll go do a conference and for like a, an audition out in a different city, correct? Oh, yeah, I mean, like, some people go to the conference, mm -hmm. some people don't. It just depends on, like, what your main goals are. But, yeah, I, I do like Dream Tracks. I think that Frank and the other teachers that work there really do genuinely care about their students mm -hmm. and want us to, like, set up a career to be a working actor. That's what I really like about them. And yeah. I like that they challenge you. So there are a few classes that are going on. I know Mondays they're actually starting an improv troupe that's okay. debuting debuting in the palms uh i i'm not i'm not in it yet i think maybe later on i'll probably end up joining but don't 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 quote me on that but uh so 
But yeah, the improv troupe is on Mondays, like, and then also they train you how to do auditions, which mm -hmm. I think is very important, because I still have pretty bad anxiety. I know that I'm talking to you, and I'm talking on live uh, internet right now, but yeah, I do um, still have some anxiety with auditions, so that class really helps. Tuesday is just a regular actors intensive, and then Wednesday today, which is I'm going right after this, I'm doing a stunt class that's taught by Jeremiah Brennan. It's a he does actually know what he's doing. It is like yeah. a really good class. And uh, on Thursdays, it's more of the advanced classes and master's class. They go to those two. Yeah. And Friday, they have the modeling class that's taught by Don Sullivan, who has a show here as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So which yeah. is kind of your connect and how you got here. How I got that here. Because yeah, I was on Don's show uh, yeah. about a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're not a new person on social media shows, which is great. Uh, yeah. I see a lot of people that come here and they're very, they've never seen this up before. A lot of people that don't do film, television, acting, they're on their own thing. If anything, they'll do YouTube. And like this to them is like very intimidating. So I'm kind of glad that for you, at least you kind of had your feet wet a little bit on Dawn's show and then also with your classes, which is great. Yeah. And also when I was at Hope College during my last semester, my senior year, I did take a news broadcasting mm -hmm. class where they sort of taught you how to, you know, read a teleprompter, how to do, how to like like talk about the weather honestly i have so much respect for meteorologists because it's really yeah, hard because there's just like easy. there's like, like a green screen back here that you can't see anything exactly. you just have to go remember, like you just remember the picture yeah. and you're like all right it's got to be somewhere around here they press the sun right yeah <laughs> like so what about acting really calls to you why do you want to be an actor well i think that i think like it's i know lots of people think like oh i want to be famous i want to be this and like i mean sure that'd be a very like cool thing to happen but I think I just like it because I like being able to express myself express my emotions because mm -hmm. I think especially nowadays like people expect you to act a certain way like you like they say like oh you have to be serious you have to be like positive vibes only and whatnot and mm -hmm. on, when you're acting especially if like you're doing a scene where you're angry or sad you can truly express yourself and show a side of you that you might not normally be able mm -hmm. to show so that I think that's one thing about acting that it's a very rewarding part of it. And it's an extremely intimidating part of it. And I'm still not entirely there yet, but I think yeah. but I think I'll be there soon. And you learn a lot about yourself in the process, even playing other characters. Yeah, because you have to really dig yeah. deep into yourself mm -hmm. to like get certain emotions out. Like and, and also like these are characters like, you know, sometimes like, you know, I might have to play like I have to play like, you know, like a police officer. I'm not a police officer, but you know, I have to understand like like how they work so I can be a convincing character. Mm -hmm. So what has been your biggest struggle so far that you got back into acting even prior to you finding Dream Shacks? Has there any been a, an overlooking struggle that you're having that you feel is going to carry with you in regards to presenting yourself as an actor? Yeah, and I we talked about this when I went to the intensive with Michael Cimino uh, last week. He does think that I do have raw emotions, but the main thing is that I have walls. Mm -hmm. Like I, there's I like so, there's some <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's something inside me that's like holding me back from yeah. actually truly exposing like everything. And like they say, like yeah, like no, like you have acting chops. Like you could definitely you can definitely like you know book stuff but to be like a truly like amazing actress I mean like being in like major films maybe even going to the Oscars one day you have to figure out what's causing those walls so that's why I think lots of actors and people in general should like look into like their mental health and whatnot I actually am gonna go back into therapy to see like I because I, I do want those walls down I do want to like yeah because I think it's just good it's good in general because you know like there are some people who feel like they can't communicate because like they have like trauma that's holding them back and they're too afraid to talk about that so mm -hmm. and I just know like it's really good to get that stuff out there but it can be scary to oh, talk about that stuff so yeah. yeah I think that's the one thing that's holding me back is just that those walls mm -hmm. so what goals do you have for yourself apart from you letting go as an actor and really finding you know you as an actor and and you in that place what's your end goal look like for you um I would say like and I did talk about this because there was another speaker came in. I just want to be able to be in a position where I can basically make all of my living off of being an actor. Okay. And obviously, like, it takes lots of, like, financial education to do that. Because especially, like, I mean, the actors are on strike right now because they're not being paid. But hopefully I'll be able to be in a position where I can just, like, like just live off of being an actor and doing what I love. Mm -hmm. And would you ever return back to the stage? Or do you feel like cameras and, and being on sets are more of where you call home? I, I am definitely not against, I'm not against being on the stage again. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would love to do that if I could find something that works for me.
Yeah, I feel when you mentioned London at one point before you said it was for studying law, I was like, they have a really good intensive theater um, yeah, the community out there, and and all the actors that come out of the UK, majority of the time, are very theatrically trained, yeah. which is makes them really strong actors even on screen. Yeah, and honestly, if you look, because you know, the UK has a very small acting scene because it, one, it's just super hard to break into. I know it's like who you know here, but mm -hmm. in the UK, it's like 10 times that. It's basically like who your family was, who you know. And also, you'll notice that the majority of those actors that you see, they either went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts or the London Academy of Music and Dramatic mm -hmm. Arts. That's like, they all went to those two schools. Like, uh, yeah. like uh, Benedict Cumberbatch went to Lambda, Tom Hiddleston, Rada, the guy who played Eddie Munson on Stranger Things. I yeah. think he went to Lambda. Like, they all went to yeah, those yeah. schools and they they're all great other. actors. Right, and they all knew each other. They're like, oh yeah, when we were younger, we were roommates one time. Yeah. Back in blah, 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 which, yeah. you know, is, is really good. <laughs> great and yeah. so do you believe that there is going to be a great a film community here I mean it is what it is now and I know it's growing but I love hearing from actors and you're more of the beginning stages that take no offense but you know you're getting back into it you're finding yeah. yourself you're finding your place yeah. um, what does it look like from your end how do you view the film community here in Vegas so like I have only, I've only been in the film community for six months, but from mm -hmm. what I've seen, because I did go to a meetup in April, it seems that once you are like fully Im immersed in like the uh, culture here, like your family, like it seems like it seems like like Frank Frank at Dream Tracks knows everyone, and there are students at Dream Tracks who have been acting for a very long time. They all have connections and they all know each other. So I think that there is a tight knit group, and with Sony and Disney coming. Like allegedly, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see. I think it's gonna like even it, it is gonna make make it even bigger. And I know that lots of my friends. I know Mark Wahlberg believes in it. And while I was in Los Angeles, lots of my friends got to meet him, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do think that I do think like the like the film like the film uh, industry in Las Vegas is gonna grow and prosper. Yeah. Because I know that there was a time in Michigan for about I think like three four years where. Mm -hmm. There was a tax incentive, so so many films are coming to Michigan to film there, and that tax yeah. incentive did fall through. So that's why now I was telling people, this was like I've sort of been burned with these film incentives for coming to like a certain state. So I mean, it's a wait and see approach, but I guess since Vegas is a bit different than Michigan, I do think it's more <laughs> likely to happen. Just a, here. just a little bit, and all different little aspects. Just like a little bit. It's, yeah. it's our sister, right? Just yeah. kidding. But do you plan on staying here for a while? Do you love Vegas? Do you call this home? Oh, no? yes. I do call it home. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, I, I do love it so much. And, and honestly, I think my dad and stepmom like it a lot, too. And they did mention, oh, yeah, we're probably going to buy some, We're going to probably buy a property yeah. out here, maybe. And so that's not, that'd be nice. So, yeah, I do. I do think that Vegas is finally going to have its, like, resurgence. Yeah, yeah. And what is one thing that you're learning a lot about yourself? I know you're working. I know on your walls. But with Dream Tracks, because you're not the only student that has come here from Dream Tracks to sit in the hot mm -hmm. seat. But what do you take from it? What do you see Dream Tracks as for you and your career and yourself? Uh, I see it as a place that will not only make me a better actor, but a better person. Mm -hmm. I think with the people I've spoken to there and the friends that I've made there, they are making me into a better person. So I do think that... Like Dream Tracks is like the start of something really great for me. Yeah, because it can be intimidating when you're going into a world that everyone wants to be in, right? Mm, yeah. And there's so many moving parts in acting, because acting can then range from film, stage, commercial, TV, you know, broadcasting, events, all this stuff, hosting even, um, that it's something that you never really know where to start or yeah. where it's going to go, because every single day is different, right? Right. But you seem like you have the right guidance that can take you to the place where you want to go. Yeah, and Dream Tracks is honestly the first acting school that I went to, because mm -hmm. when I was in Michigan, I didn't really, like, because I was in my 20s, I was broke. I was a legal assistant. Before I went to law school, I didn't really have the funds to take acting classes there. So mm -hmm. so I was just basically, like, go. I was basically on my own there. So I do, def Dream Tracks de also definitely made me a better actor because I've been taking their classes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's great. I'm glad to hear it. So it's just a little promotion right there. Yeah, Dream Tracks. Come Dream Tracks. But would you ever continue doing law? Is that something that you are not going to let go? Or is it always going to be a part of you? Or is that something that you're trying to leave behind and pursue acting full time? I think it is something I'm going to leave behind. I'm okay. very grateful for law school. I learned a lot about myself. I've made lots of really good friends in law school. And mm -hmm. it definitely made me learn how to think outside the box, which are good experiences to have. So 
I don't regret law school, but I think that yeah. I'm probably not going to practice law. Yeah, I mean, it did. It does build, you know, your character. You do know how to meet people, talk to people, and kind of be assertive in a way. And I think those are all very good qualities that you need to have in the entertainment industry. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, because like there were definitely some students that I went to law school with where you can tell that all, they want to practice law. They are lawyers. It's right. in their blood, and I don't think I had that same drive. I think that's for, what I get for acting. Yeah, they they they're, they see law. They are law. They want to be law, right? Yes. Like that's all that it is. But there is one more question that I do yes. ask all of my um, guests. I do sit here, and it kind of sums up them as a person. And I love hearing their answer. Um, is there a motto or philosophy that you live by? I would, I would say it would be take it one day of it, take it one day at a time and mm. never sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. It does eventually <laughs> like yeah. the next day you wake up and be like, dang, I was really going crazy over that one thing. Really? Yeah. But thank you so much. Thank You're you. a great guest. I really hope that you find your place in the acting community and you find yourself. Um, cause once you do those things, I promise you will be able to let go. Cause if you are able to let go in front of the camera, and that that's the best that you can be in building any character that you're showing on there. So I really yeah. hope that for you. I hope I that hope. too. And I, yeah. I'll get there. I'll yeah, you there. will. You yeah. will. Take it one, like we said, one day at one a time. One day at a time, exactly. Yeah, and focus on those struggles as they come. And I really, I think that you will be able to withstand all the obstacles. So Thank you. I appreciate way. that. But everyone, Mary Kaufman, please tell them really quick on where to find you on social media if they want uh, to connect. If you want to find me on Instagram, it is It's Mary Kaufman. The last name is a K-A-U-F-F-M-A-N. So It's Mary Mary Kaufman. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We're going to be looking out for your success. I'm sure this isn't the last time that you'll be here on the nope. network. So, <laughs> at Mary Kaufman, everyone, Good please job. follow her. And when we come back, we are going to meet our next amazing guest. So, stay tuned for that.